Hi everyone, this is the Liturgy of the Word for the Feast of St. Thomas. Let's sing Lead Me, Lord. Blessed are the poor in spirit longing for their Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Friday of the 13th week, which is really the Feast of St. Thomas. It's a feast day, so we're going to celebrate it. We're really, you know, in the mind of the church, uh, are called to celebrate that. And we're going to try to incorporate some different things about um, our country's birthday. Uh, that's a very important day for us these days. Uh, we should really take that seriously. Fourth of July means more than a picnic, I think, this year for all of us. So let's celebrate all that together. Um, you all know who St. Thomas is, one of the twelve, so we can begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and we ask God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the sick, Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you long to heal your church, Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you long to heal our country, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, that we may glory in the feast of blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession, and believing may have life in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the Holy Ones and the members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. This is Psalm 117 with no response, and it'll go straight into the Alleluia. Praise the Lord, all you nations, glorify him, all you for his steadfast kindness and his faithfulness endure forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger into his nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and still believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, uh, did you ever wonder why um, he always, John, he does it over and over again, Thomas called Didymus. Why, why does he keep on mentioning the Didymus part? Because it, it, the word Didymus simply means twin, which is what Thomas is. So Thomas called Thomas, or twin called twin. And so who's he the twin of? Did he have a twin? Uh, did he look like somebody else? Well, I, I've heard one person say that he looked like Jesus. That's why I kept on calling him the twin. He looked like him. So it was like a nickname for him in some way. And aren't we all supposed to be looking like Jesus? And did you ever wonder why Thomas, now think about it for a moment first, folks. He appears to the apostles, Jesus does. He appears to Mary Magdalene. He appears to disciples on the road to Emmaus. And, and last, and, and, and over the week, and, and Thomas hears all of this. I mean, the disciples must have been jumping out of their skin. I know Mary Magdalene was jumping out of her skin. I can't imagine the two disciples, how fired up they were. And could, why would Thomas not have any? Why did he not believe that? Why did he doubt all these witnesses who he had hung around with for years, knew them very, very well, knew they weren't crazy? I mean, they were following Jesus. That's kind of crazy enough, but they weren't insane. Anyway, why would he not believe them? And isn't it interesting also that somehow... I mean, when we have done this, Jesus yields to Thomas's demands. He lets him put his hand into his, his, in the wounds in his hand. He lets him put his finger into the wound in his side. He yields to, G, to Thomas. He lets him do all that stuff. What a remarkable response of humility on the part of Jesus. So we take our eyes off of Thomas for a moment and put our eyes on Jesus. What a remarkable response Jesus gives. Here's Jesus all the time. There's someone who washes feet. Comes the incarnation, though he was in the form of God, didn't deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, he emptied himself to become in the, come in the form of a slave, to become like one of us. And, and, and uh, also, too, the, the way of even dying, becoming a carpenter dying on the cross. Jesus always coming, always being the one who initiates, always the one who, who, who bends over backwards for us, always, always giving himself completely to us. And this brings me to my point today for all of us. What is our message today? I think for, um, oh, excuse me, for, for uh, uh, the Feast of St. Thomas and also the 4th of July. First of all, that you belong. That first reading, I should have mentioned, please listen carefully to Dan as he reads the first reading. I'm sure you, you, you are by now doing all that. You are no longer strangers or sojourners, but citizens with the Holy One. You know, how often have we felt like strangers and sojourners in our lives and oftentimes in the church? But this whole idea of belonging, of making people feel like they belong, I'm thinking about this more, not just as a church, but also as a citizen of our country. How many people feel like strangers and sojourners and not like citizens? You know, 
uh, earlier this week, I saw an editorial cartoon where there was the American Eagle sitting down and he's reading the newspaper and the headlines say, all are created equal. Pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. All have the ability to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. All created equal. And then there's the thought that comes to the American eagle's head. Now, maybe we need a refresher course in this. Or maybe we need to take it seriously for the very first time in our lives. Because have we ever, ever meant all? in all of that. And, and by the way, you can't shame people into this. You can't shame our country and simply just simply say that our country is fundamentally evil because we've had slavery in it, or we've done some things wrong, and we have done things wrong. I mean, I never forget reading the book, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee, about how we treated the Native Americans in our own country back in the 1860s and 1870s. It was a horrific book to read. Talk about having sin on our soul, but it doesn't make us fundamentally evil either. We've done some wrong things, yes. And you can't shame people into it either. You can't shame white people into somehow acquiescing uh, uh, for, uh, for equality and citizenship for everybody. That's not gonna work. Shaming people, shaming our country never ever works. Jesus shows us the model of what we need to do. This model of humility, not groveling, none of those kinds of things, but somehow reaching out constantly to others, seeking people out, trying to understand others. White people understanding black folks. Black folks trying to understand white people. People of color of all different traditions trying to make sense of one another, talking to one another. Where are we, co where are we coming from? Uh, where do, where, where, what's our tradition? What's our heritage? Where are we feeling like we're not citizens at the particular moment? Taking the first step in whole new ways of being inclusive that all are created equal. All have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. First of all, for you and I to reform our church, that everybody feels like they belong in our church. And then secondly, to reform our country, to really feel like everybody belongs, that everybody feels like they belong, which they don't right now. And we have to work on that in good ways and let Jesus be our model, the way he acts with Thomas, the way he acts as he walked around the face of the way he acts even today, this this uh, giving himself totally to others and, and always, always seeking to let other people belong and letting people know that they do belong, that they are no longer strangers, but citizens. Then we will have arrived as a church and also have arrived in our country as we celebrate our birthday tomorrow, July 4th. Here's our question, one question for today. Do you relate to Thomas's unwillingness? Uh, to believe without seeing. God bless you. Hope to see you this weekend, maybe at uh, the 10 o'clock Mass on Sunday as we have our Mass over in Price Field, uh, over in Westmont Football Field, and looking forward to seeing you wherever the venue is this weekend. Goodbye.